Area with Sarah Donchi starts right now. Deadly wildfires tear through, um, through Maui, reducing an historic tourist town to ash. New accounts of really dramatic evacuations and the impact of travelers here in the Bay Area. People basically running for their lives. People jump in the ocean to escape as hurricane force winds fuel the flames. It has turned very serious and very dire. Heartbreaking stories of an island devastated. Our house is gone. Everything that we had ever known was gone. Everyone I know in Lahaina, their homes have been burned down. We hear from Bay Area tourists who were caught in the middle of it. We heard that the boats that we just were on two days ago are now completely burned. And others trying to get home. It was like a scene of Grand Theft Auto in Contra Costa County, a carjacking suspect's wild crime spree across two cities. I'm John Ramos in the East Bay. Who can tell if any of these parked cars are hiding an iPhone or a laptop? I can, and it's a lot easier than you think. I've never heard of that before, but it doesn't surprise me. Yeah, some smart thieves out there. <laughs> this is CBS News Bay Area with Juliet Goodrich. Hello, I'm Sarah Donji, and for Juliet today, what a heartbreaking situation in Hawaii right now. Wind-driven wildfires tearing a path of destruction that really looks apocalyptic. It is the worst natural disaster to hit Hawaii in more than 30 years. The fires have killed six people on Maui, forced hundreds of evacuations, and wiped out an historic tourist town. These fires are partly fueled by strong winds from Hurricane Dora, which is passing a safe distance to the south of the island, but it has sparked gusts up to 80 miles per hour. The fires on Maui are concentrated in two areas. On the west side, where there is the popular tourist destination of Lahaina, and in an inland mountainous region, there's also a couple hundred homes threatened in a rural community on the Big Island. This all happened so incredibly fast. Homes and businesses went up in flames in Lahaina. You can see buildings on fire on Front Street. This is an area that a lot of people are familiar with, probably a lot of you here in the Bay Area. It's a main strip of shops and restaurants. Oh my gosh, look at the harbor. Oh my gosh. That is so tough. These are some of the first daylight aerial images of all the destruction in Lahaina. And you can hear the pilot is just in absolute shock to see blocks of homes burn to the ground there. The fires are, as of right now, still out of control. So we don't really have a full picture of the extent of the damage. This is another view of the Lahaina Harbor. The Coast Guard rescued a dozen people who jumped in the ocean to escape. Officials are calling the situation unprecedented. The state has issued an emergency pro proclamation and activated its National Guard. Hospitals have been very overwhelmed, treating patients with burns and smoke inhalation. To complicate things, cell service is down. 911 is cut off. You can imagine the panic that that would induce. One Lahaina resident who got out of town says she still cannot reach some of her family members. Everyone I know in Lahaina, their homes have been burned down. Um, luckily, some of my family made it up country tonight with like, my cousin Dustin, who was sitting up here. Um, but they lost everything. Uh, the house is gone. And um, just please pray for Lahaina. So upsetting. So all roads in Lahaina are closed right now, except for emergency responders. And crews are rushing to repair down power lines. One woman described a really scary situation just trying to get out. There's cars with flames on both sides of the road, like people stuck in traffic trying to get out. And there, there's flame on, on both sides of the road, like something out of a, a, a horror movie. Unfortunately, we have a lot of experience with that situation here in our state. Hawaii reporter Chelsea Davis got really emotional sharing a live update on the ground in Maui when the anchors asked her about her own friends and family there. I, like so many other people on Maui, have been trying to get a hold of loved ones out on the west side and a lot of people, excuse me, 
for getting no show, not answering. And so I know a lot of people are trying to do that as well, which is um, fearful for their loved ones. Are they okay? Uh, we're, we're not really getting a lot of information, so we don't know. Um, we're told um, cell service is, is spotty. Um, phones are going straight to voicemail. So um, it, communication is exceptionally poor. Such a tough situation. You saw in her shot how windy it is there. That obviously complicates things. There are about 4,000 tourists trying to leave Maui. A lot of them ended up sleeping at the airport last night. State officials are planning to fly them to Oahu where they can stay at the Hawaii Convention Center. There are also people trying to get back to Maui from right here in the Bay Area. Jose Martinez caught up with travelers at SFO who just want to get home. I'm here at the San Francisco International Airport where multiple flights to Maui have been canceled. We spent some time with two friends who are now stuck here in San Francisco after those cancellations. It's not the way these longtime friends from Maui expected to end their vacations. Flying in from Denver from our annual road trip and upon landing here in San Francisco, find out all the uh, flights to Maui are canceled. Now we're, we live on Maui, we just want to get home but uh, there's no flights going into Maui. Alan Yamamoto and Bob Leiferman are among the many passengers who this Wednesday had to grapple with this unexpected reality at San Francisco International yes. Airport. We knew that the airport was still open, flights were still going in and out, they're shipping 4,000 tourists out of Maui, so why can't they fly in? And it's because the plane is 90% tourists. <laughs> So those of us that live there, we get stuck. During our time at the airport, we met some other passengers who didn't want to be on camera, but they all shared the same frustration. But Alan and Bob say at least they know their homes are intact and their families are safe. Not even. Yeah, we're not in a fire district. I live in Wailuku. He lives in Kahului. I live a mile from the airport, so and the, the, the fires aren't anywhere near there. It's all on the west side of the island. United Airlines released a travel alert related to the Maui fires for August 9th and 10th. If your flight is affected, the company says that there are options, including rescheduling your trip without any additional fees if you're traveling before August 16th. But for now, Alan and Bob tell me they're going to have to find a hotel room nearby, hoping that this Thursday things could be different and they could finally catch a flight back home. We were, we were on a 10 day road trip, you know, longing to get home. I mean, you live in Hawaii, you want to get home. Now they're going to try again tomorrow, but United says that those passengers who decide not to travel can actually get a full refund. What a tough situation. Imagine not knowing and all of the stress that that would bring. Now look at this. This is a drone shot of those fires raging last night in West Maui. Just awful. Maui's mayor says helicopters couldn't get up in the air yesterday, but they are now able to use water drops to fight the fire. This is satellite imagery that shows the growth of those fires starting from sunset yesterday. Obviously, a lot to talk about with the wind dynamic here. But, you know, some of these conditions are not conducive to flying air tankers, helicopters, yeah. and that really complicates things and it doesn't leave you with a lot of options. Yeah, the gusty winds are certainly the factor, but it's not just the wind speed, it's also the wind direction. So we're going to talk about both of those and we'll start with what's producing the wind speeds, those gusty winds over the island of Maui, the entire Hawaiian island chain. Of course, the image is just devastating. We'll bring in our artificial reality globe here, augmented reality globe, and show you basically the entire Pacific. And you can see how small Hurricane Dora is compared to the entire Pacific Ocean. So that's small little white dot to the southwest of the Hawaiian island chain, but we can kind of bring the globe out for a closer look. And it's not just the presence of that hurricane, which is still a major hurricane. It's several hundred miles off the Hawaiian island chain at the moment, but it's proximity to a strong area of high pressure to the north. So everything is kind of getting squeezed in between those two features, similar to when you put your thumb over the opening of a garden hose, the water shoots out farther and faster. You're constricting the amount of atmosphere, the size of the atmosphere that all that air has to flow through. So it's going faster and faster. That produces those gusty winds going from east to west. And that means it's a downslope wind over the island of Maui. And we always have to worry about that in our neck of the woods. We're talking about elevated fire threats. So we'll bring in a different perspective here. Whenever the wind flows up any kind of terrain, whether it's just a hill or an actual mountain chain, volcanic uh, islands of Hawaii, the wind as it blows up the mountain is going to lose 
holds some moisture. That moisture condenses on the windward side of the island, and then as the air flows down the other side, it is going to be very, very dry, and it warms up at a faster rate than it cooled down when it was going up the other side of the mountain. So it's not only very strong winds, but also very hot and very dry winds, just exacerbating the entire fire weather situation. This is one of those things whenever we have extreme fire behavior, you can almost bet with a 100% certainty that gusty downslope winds are one of the major contributing factors. That's certainly the case on Maui over the past 24 to 48 hours. And again, the image is just devastating. Fortunately, the hurricane is moving farther and farther away, so the squeeze on the atmosphere is starting to lessen a bit. You know, everything is more difficult when you're on an island, bringing resources yep. in, everything. Yeah, just the logistical train is hard. Yeah, and no. getting people off and getting people back. Our no. thoughts are with them for sure. Thanks for explaining mm -hmm. all of that. We appreciate it. Maui's main industry, of course, is tourism. No surprise there. And these deadly fires are affecting thousands of people who were hoping for a relaxing vacation on the island. And Makovic has some of their stories for us now. And Yes, Sarah, of course, Maui is known for dream vacations. And thousands of tourists are now stranded or scrambling for Plan B, including this Bay Area family, the Stewarts, Daniel, Sandra, and their three children followed an evacuation order issued by their hotel. They're among over 4,000 tourists who were forced to evacuate. Now they say they're basically camping at the Maui airport. And unfortunately, not everybody was. Some folks were stranded. Some folks didn't have supplies. You know, as usual, stores ran out of water, ran out of supplies, etc. And then early this morning at about four o'clock, the hotel staff issued a recommend to evacuate before a mandatory evac came that uh, the fires were getting closer. And so then we evacuated around the north end of Maui uh, back to the vicinity of the airport where we are now. Now they're waiting for a flight to come back home to the Bay Area, hopefully on Thursday. They say they're grateful to be alive, but can't help feeling overwhelmed. We are seeing a lot of stories on social media, too. A couple on their honeymoon left their stuff after being evacuated from their hotel. The husband asked on Twitter if anybody could connect him and his wife with a place to stay on the island, which are obviously hard to come by. Here's a post from downtown Lahaina. Lots of cars left stranded uh, were destroyed. Homes and businesses burnt to the ground and they're now piles of debris. This once busy tourist spot known for its shopping and dining, now just gone. Among the buildings damaged by the fires include the Lahaina Library. Strong winds whipping around as flames engulfed the roof of that building. The library was almost 70 years old. And still getting conflicting reports on what has become of the famous banyan tree. This Twitter user visited the tree three weeks ago and shot a video of it. It's more than 60 feet tall. It was brought over from India back in 1873. Now, you alluded to this earlier, Sarah. A lot of people here in the Bay Area have an emotional connection to what's happening in Maui. It's a big destination from the West Coast. And, of course, we understand the mm -hmm. devastation and terror of wildfires here in California. You know, we really do. And anytime you're talking about tourism, you have to mention the people who, the locals who support that industry, who are losing work losing belongings, losing loved ones. And thank you so much for putting that in per, into perspective for us as well. For more updates on these devastating wildfires and Thanks. what is sure to be a long recovery, you can find the latest developments and more really stunning images of Maui on our website, kpix.com. More headlines now. A wild crime spree this afternoon in Contra Costa County led police through two cities it started on Birch Drive in Walnut Creek, where neighbors reported a shirtless man with a large tattoo on his stomach trying to break into multiple homes. He didn't have any luck. That's when police say he carjacked a silver Toyota Corolla on Treat Boulevard. He drove the Toyota to Holly Drive and ditched it, and then allegedly stole the van of a landscaping crew that was working close by. We talked to a neighbor who says the suspect tried to break into his house, but he managed to scare him off. My wife alerted me of a potential intruder and was confronted by a person in my garage slash driveway. And he attempted to uh, attack me. I went to uh, retrieve my firearm. And in the process, he threw an object through our window, which made an enormously loud noise. And then by the time I got back to the front of the house, he was gone. That sounds scary, too. The suspect then drove that second stolen vehicle to Hookston Road in Pleasant Hill. Neighbors there called police about a man matching the description, trying to break into even more homes. Our chopper was overhead as police finally caught up to the suspect and took him into custody.